conditional probabilities are really important for statistical traders, um, really important in statistical trading, specifically from the perspective of like data analysis. Um, I wanted to talk about what are conditional probabilities? Why are they so important in statistical trading? And then how can I use conditional probabilities, which I made a spreadsheet, but I'm still uploading it to the Google Drive. And then this is going to be available. I'll put it in the description of the video coded it to the best of my ability. But um, <laughs> if anybody wants to improve it, they can absolutely go ahead and hop in. Um, but OK, first things first, what is conditional probability? I've talked about this so many times. But conditional probability, probability of an event occurring given that something else has also happened, which infers some kind of relationship between the events that we're linking together. So for example, what is the probability that it rained given that the sidewalk is wet? Or what is the probability that someone eats ice cream given that it's summer? What is the probability that I traded Tesla given that my portfolio is red? It is inferring some kind of connection between these two types of events, some kind of like probability of one occurring given that the other has already happened. And so that this can come up really crucially in trading. Like we can measure some really crucial relationships using these probabilities. And it's low key actually pretty easy to calculate, which is why I wanted to try to do this in more of a workshop style. So hopefully the actual calculation makes a little bit more sense. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so the conditional probability formula can look a little daunting for people who maybe haven't seen a lot of set theory, but it's actually pretty intuitive. So our conditional probability is over here. So this is the probability of A happens given that B has happened. So that's what this represents here. We have this dash. What is the probability of event A happening given that B has happened? Okay. All that probability is the probability of both A and B happening divided by the probability of B or effectively like just looking at the occurrences over which B happened and then looking at the probability that both of these happened to look at the conditional probability of one thing happening given that something else happened. Okay, so this is where we're gonna get our noodles working. We're gonna look at an example and we're gonna have a couple questions. So in this example, this is one of the ones that we gave on the intro slide. Event A is going to be that it rained, okay? And event B is the sidewalk is wet. And we want to find out what is the probability that it rained given that the sidewalk is wet. Because we know that when it rains, sometimes the sidewalk gets wet. But we also know that there are instances when the sidewalk is wet and it hasn't rained. And so we want to look at the conditional probability. What is the probability that it rained given that the sidewalk is wet? So what this data normally looks like is something like this. And stock data, returns data is going to look very similar. So here is day one through 10, looking at the last 10 days of data, day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And this is the problem, like, this is the instances in which A occurred. So A remembers that it rained. So A occurred on day one with a one. It did not occur on day two. It occurred on day three. It occurred on day four. It didn't occur on days five or six. It did occur on seven, but not eight through 10, right? Make sense? Yep. Okay. And then these are the measurements of B. So for day one, the sidewalk is wet. For day three, the sidewalk is wet. And then for all these other days, the sidewalk is not wet, right? And we see some other ones in here, right? So this is how we would typically represent that data. And with our columns, A is the event that it rained and B is the sidewalk is wet. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what is PA, the probability that it rained? Everybody drop your answers in chat. Drop your answers. This is our A data. I'm so sorry if you're looking that at this on mobile, it might be a little bit hard to see. Everybody think for a minute. Very good. Okay, Luis, do you want to give an answer? Everybody yeah. else in chat. So what is PA, which is just the probability that it rained? The 40%. Exactly, right. Because we measured four times, one, two, three, four times that it rained out of the 10 possible instances in nice. our data set. Okay, now let's go on to two. So that's exactly 40%. So now let's look at another one. What is PB, the probability that the sidewalk is wet? And here is our B data. So take yeah. a second. Everybody give your answers. What is PB, the probability that the sidewalk is wet? Everybody give your answers. So you want to give your answer? 50%. Exactly. So 50% of the time mm -hmm. it rained. So that's just counting up all the times when it rained and then dividing by the total number of data points that we've measured. This is excellent. So that is 50%. So now let's look at the conditional prop or let's look at the additional probability. So now what is PA and PB, the probability that the sidewalk is wet and it rained. So now take a second to think about that. This one's a little trickier. What is PA and B, the probability that the sidewalk is wet and it rained? It's a tricky, more tricky question, but. Got some people over here. We got some guesses. 
Everybody give you guesses. Everybody give you guesses. A hundred thousand percent. Gary, I think you got it right. Okay. <laughs> Luis, you ready to give your guess? It might be a little hard to see, so that might also be part of it. Yeah, I was gonna go for the easy one, maybe like just the, taking the, the average both, but I'm gonna say 50, but I'm not sure. Okay, that's a good guess. A couple people also gave that guess. But mm -hmm. when we look at what is the probability of A and B both occurring, we have to look at the times when the sidewalk was wet and it rained, these measurements. So when we look at this slide, we can see that A and B were one, which means true. It's like we measured it correctly, three out of the 10 times. So it's actually 30%, right? Oh. So if A is one and then B is one, that means we measured both that it was wet and that it was raining. So we can see it, say that 30% of the time it rained and the sidewalk was wet. What's the probability that SPY is positive and the cues are positive on a day? You're really just looking at the times That's when true. in this in this data set, oops, we're looking at the times in this data set when both of these occurrences are measured. That gives us our additive probabilities. So that's all this is, it's P, A, and B. Hell yeah. So now when we look at our conditional probability, what is the probability that, it, like, what is the probability that it rained given that the sidewalk is wet? We just take the two probabilities that we calculated, the probability that it rained and the sidewalk is wet, remember that 30%, and we divide it by the probability that the sidewalk is wet, which is 50%, which means that what is the probability that when I see that the ground is wet, that it rained, that's a 60% chance, which means those 40% of the times, it means that the ground is wet and it didn't rain, right? That's all it is. But so why does this matter for trading? This is actually really important because we, it's not ideal, but really our best way of getting information around risk and return is we use historical statistics to base that because that gives us a quantifiable measure for risk and return, at least based on historical trends. Now, the market historically is a lot different than the market is now, right? But at least it gives us some numbers around what we can expect long term. So conditional probabilities allow us to gauge those risks and rewards and those tendencies as they relate to other market variables. And we know that the market consists of a bunch of interconnected elements. So using this probability, we just did it just now. It's actually really pretty straightforward to calculate if you can get the data. And it tells you a lot about all those different relationships in the market. So it's extremely important and we actually use it all the time. So for example, even on this show, we talk about large moves, right? Yep. So this is something we calculate. What is the probability that if SPY has a really big move today, that it has another really big move within the next 10 days? So given that we have a big move today, what's the probability we have another one in two weeks? That's a 74% chance. For the Qs, it's 81%. For GLD, it's 61%. It's that very simple calculation. That's all that's going on in here, right? And that can tell us a lot about what to expect around large moves, which matter a lot for options traders. Or for example, let's look at intraday reversals. Given that SPY opens bigger than 2%, that's a very big move, but given that we open higher than 2%, so overnight move, we move really, really big. What's the probability that we reverse on the day? So given that this one thing happens, what is the chance that we see something else happening in the future historically that's 8.7%? So that means that's a very small chance of reversing if we have a really big move on the open pretty much. And that, for instance, for short term strategies can make a really big difference in terms of how we actually how we actually trade. Right. Make sense. Yep. This one is one that I find personally very interesting. So what are conditional up consecutive up days and down days? And we talk a lot about like the market being efficient and the you know, market being like 50 50 on any given day. But for example, what is the probability that we have an up day given that we had two consecutive down days or three consecutive down days or four consecutive down days. All that is is a conditional probability. It's just that calculation that we saw before. So on any given day, SPY is up 53, almost 54% of the time, right? There's a little bit of that positive drift in the market. But if we have one down day, there's actually a 55% chance that we're gonna have an update tomorrow. Right. So it's still pretty close to just any random day having an update when we get up to two. So like, let's say we have two down days in a row. What's the probability that we reverse and have a green day? Um, kind of like what we're seeing today a little bit. Um, that's a 56 percent chance. So now we're getting more likely to see that reversal for given down days. Um, if we have three consecutive down days, there is a 59 percent chance we're going to have a fourth green day, right? And then if we have four consecutive down days, there's a 62% chance that we're going to reverse and have a green day. Um, so it gets higher and higher, the more down days that we have. 
And that again can be used really roughly to make trading strategy. Let's look at the reverse of that. So what is the probability that we have some number of consecutive up days and then we get a down day? What you see is the probabilities are actually a lot less sensitive. It again shows you this like positive drift in the market, how the market pushes to be positive so hard. But on any given down day, SPY is down about 45-ish percent of the time, something like that. Um, it returns negative uh, about 40% of the time. If we have an up day, the probability of a down day following is about 46%. If we have four consecutive up days, that probability is 53% chance that we're going to have a, uh, a down day that follows, which is like a little bit higher than a coin flip, which goes to show you that we could have like a zillion consecutive up days. But the probability of a down day coming after that is overall pretty low. It's pretty unreliable in terms of the edge that we can get from chance. So that tells you, again, just like how hard the market tries to push up. So if we have a bunch of consecutive down days, we can a little bit more reasonably expect a reversal from that trend. We cannot as reasonably expect the opposite to happen, if that makes sense. Just because we have a bunch of consecutive up days doesn't mean that we can really reasonably or reliably expect the down day to follow. And then the last one, this came from the book, actually. So this is over here in chapter seven. Um, but this is the conditional probability of having a compounding loss. So this can be really important for options traders, right? So all this table shows is what is the probability of a spy strangle and a Q strangle it, it, having a 2x the initial credit loss. This is from 2011 to 2020. 20. Oops from 2011 to 2020. So if you're trading a SPY strangle, the probability overall that it's going to have a 2x loss is 5.8%. The probability overall of a Q strangle having a 2x loss is 8.7%. The probability of both of them having simultaneous losses is 3.9%. Okay, so overall, the probability of these losses is really, really low, right? But if we look at the conditional probability, what's the probability that given two SPY has a 2x loss, that the Qs also have a 2x loss? We just use that conditional probability formula. We just divide the probability of both of them happening divided by the probability of SPY having a 2x loss. There's a 67% chance that given SPY has a loss, Q will have a simultaneous loss, which is a lot higher, oopsie, than all of these probabilities, right? These are all conditional probabilities and they're actually pretty easy to do, which is kind of interesting. Did all that make sense, guys? Was that helpful at all? I don't know if you can get an edge, but I think it can help hedge risks a lot. That if you want to do this yourself, you can actually do it pretty easily. So you can go find a place that has historical data like Yahoo Finance, for example. You can go on there, you can look up a ticker and then you can get um, high, uh, high, low, open, close, adjusted, close, volume. If you need like implied volatility data, you can get the same type of data for the VIX. So it's, you know, for public use, you can go download it. And then, and I, I'll put it in the description of the YouTube video. Can you see that? So I made this spreadsheet. I tried my best because yeah, I don't use <laughs> Excel pretty much ever. So I had to figure out how to code this, mm -hmm. but this is a spreadsheet where you can go find some data. So you use your time column and this is your symbol column. I made this data up. Like I used a simulation to just kind of like simulate stock data pretty much. Um, this goes to a hundred days. But all you have to do basically is plug in your time, plug in your symbol price, and you can pull that from whatever data source you want. And what this does is it looks at the daily returns is what this calculates. It looks at the returns that are shifted one day. So this is today's returns. These are tomorrow's returns. These are the returns two days from now. And then it looks at some of those consecutive move probabilities. So this says, given that SPY has an update tomorrow, I'm sorry, given that SPY has an, a down day today, what is the probability that it has an update tomorrow? That's what this different cells will tell you each of those probabilities and then tell you the conditional probability. This says if SPY has two consecutive down days, what is the probability that it has an update tomorrow? And then it tells you all those different probabilities for this fake, you know, like made up asset basically. But if you want to be able to use it, I will find a way to share this in a different Google Drive and then I'll put it in the description of the YouTube video. So if you want to mess around with this, you can. 